Hello everyone. In this lecture, we will learn about the global data flow analysis. This actually is a part of uh, the uh, code generation and the code optimization phase of the compiler design. Uh, you may just see that uh, the uh, program for which you have written the high level language, the high level language has already been written in the, in the various phases of the compiler. Uh, you have done various tasks. For example, in the lexical analysis, you have identified the tokens in the lex in the syntax analysis. You have uh, checked the syntax of the given sentences. In the semantic analysis, uh, you have uh, found the meaning of the sentences which was written in the high-level language codes. And in the intermediate code generation, you have found the three address codes or the structure like that. And then uh, since all the loops have been converted to uh, the the statements of the kind if and else wherein uh, the conditional or the or the unconditional jumps have been written so uh, all the loops have been eliminated in the intermediate code generation phase in these in the next phase uh, wherein we have to do the code optimization before doing the code generation uh, we find the uh, loops with the help of the control flow analysis on uh, control flow analysis uh, uh, with on the uh, basic blocks that we have prepared. So uh, this slide shows you that there is uh, some there are some basic blocks, uh, four basic blocks for here, and uh, in the first basic block it is the assignment statement x equals to three, then c is greater than zero. If uh, c is greater than zero, is is the, is the condition is true, we will move towards the y equals to z plus w. If it is not true, we will move towards the y equals to zero. So there are the branching statement, and then after this, uh, uh, either the condition was true or the false, we have to reach to the statement a equals to two multiplied with x. So here you can see that these uh, these are the basic blocks, and these basic blocks are uh, connected with the help of the arrows. And uh, this arrow is actually telling us what will be the flow of the uh, statements in the program. So uh, a program has uh, several basic blocks as you can see. Basic blocks are connected with each other by some means which directs the execution of the program that also we have discussed. Flow graph has nodes and the edges. You can see that uh, everything represented in the rectangle are the nodes and then the arrows are representing the edges nodes are nodes or everything which is represented represented in the uh, rectangles are the blocks basic blocks and the edges are showing you how what is the flow of the program so control for finding out the control flow we have the edges and then uh, for for the nodes we have the basic blocks now uh, what is the control flow analysis what is the data flow analysis the data flow analysis is to find out the intra procedural analysis what is happening inside what is happening in a in a particular block and uh, what is uh, happening because of one of the one of the blocks in the another block okay so it actually finds out the useful information from the basic blocks and then it will be used for doing the optimization purpose now there is uh, there is an example of the optimization uh, there are two kinds of the optimization schemes what we are uh, uh, utilizing here in this uh, segment of the code one is a constant propagation and the another one is the dead code elimination so uh, a three line code is given as uh, x equals to 4 y equals to z multiplied with w and q equals to x plus y okay now uh, the value of x has been set to 4 and uh, the same value is being used by the third statement which is q equals to x plus y and in between we have not changed the value of x so the value of x which was 4 is being used by the third statement and we have not changed the value of x anywhere in the program sequence so uh, since x is 4 and that is a constant so x the x in the third statement can be replaced by 4 so with the constant propagation the third statement in the third statement instead of writing x we are writing 4 so the uh, set of instructions are now x equals to 4, y equals to z multiplied with w and q equals to 4 plus y. Now here you can see that uh, the x equals to 4 is a statement or x is a variable that we are not using anywhere else. So it is a dead code for us and in the next step we will remove this and we will remain with the two statements only that is y equals to z multiplied with w and q equals to 4 plus y. 
So we have applied two kinds of the optimization here. First was the constant propagation and then finally the dead code el elimination by which we have uh, we have performed some optimization by which the number of line of codes has been reduced. Now the data flow analysis uh, is tells you how to optimize the basic blocks. We have already seen that we are going to optimize the basic blocks or we are going to optimize the number of statements. But for optimizing the number of statements, we will have to do the data flow analysis. So data flow analysis will tell us how to optimize the basic blocks. Okay. Uh, now see the uh, with the help of the, the uh, this diagram, uh, this which actually is the data flow analysis of the on the control flow graph. Uh, we have uh, the x equals to three and c c is greater than zero. If the c is greater than zero, is the condition is true, we will move towards y equals to z plus w, and then we will come to a equals to two multiplied with x. If the condition c is greater than zero is not true, it's false. We'll go, we'll go for y equals to zero statement and then we will come to a equals to two multiplied with x. Okay, so in any of the flow, any any of the flow uh, of the graph, either we are going for the true condition or we are going for the false condition, uh, the value of x has not been changed. Okay, so since the value of x has not been changed, the uh, the x can be set to three in the last basic block. That is a equals to 2 multiplied with x can be replaced by a equals to 2 multiplied with 4. So uh, the, this is the constant propagation. In the earlier slide also we have seen the same but with the help of the diagram uh, we are doing the data flow analysis wherein we have observed that there is a constant propagation and uh, the x can be replaced by x, x can be replaced by 3 not the 4 it, it can be replaced by 3. So uh, global constant propagation needs global data flow analysis. It means if we have declared any of the variable in global and uh, uh, that actually is behaving like the constant and throughout the program we have not changed it. So we will have to analyze that what are those what are those values which has been which have been set as the constant and not getting changed in the in the flow of the program. So then those values can directly be replaced with the constant. So the global global constant propagation will need the global data flow analysis. Now, for the for doing the global data flow analysis, uh, uh, we we have uh, a formula to find, and before this, we, let's have some uh, let's create some basics. The global data flow analysis collects the information about the entire program and distribute it to the each block in the flow graph. Obviously, we have to find out the uh, some we have to find out some information based on the global data flow analysis, and whatever information we have uh, collected has to be distributed to all the basic blocks such that they can incorporate the changes what we have actually found now data flow can be uh, data flow can be collected in various blocks by setting up and solving a system of the equation and uh, the, that equation is given as out s is equals to n s minus scale s union generate x generate s okay so I just repeat that what uh, what this formula is saying that out s is equals to n s difference scale of s. Earlier I said uh, minus, but the, it is not minus. It actually is the difference because uh, everything either it is out s or n s or kill s or generate s, all these other sets. Okay. So if we have to do the data flow analysis, uh, data flow uh, global data flow analysis for that we need to perform uh, some uh, data flow analysis on each of the block. And for each of the block, we will be finding out the out and the in with the help of uh, this formula. And uh, you can just see that what are these values. Uh, out s is the definition that reach block b's exit. Generate x s is the definitions within the block b that reach the end of b. In s means the definition that reaches b's entry. Kill s means uh, definitions that never reaches the end of b. So uh, it may not be clear with uh, with the description of all this. Let us take an example and understand what these values are saying. Uh, on the right hand side, we have uh, uh, a basic block, and then uh, the con uh, we have performed the data flow analysis on the control flow graph. This is the control flow graph, and uh, in this we have five basic blocks: B1, B2, B3, B4, and B5. In B1, we have two statements numbered as 1 and 2. In B2, we have one statement numbered as 3. In block 3, B3, we have uh, a one statement which is numbered as 4. In uh, uh, the B4 block, we have uh, one statement which is numbered as 5. 
in b5 block we have one statement which is numbered as 6 so these are the statement numbers now uh, for for let, let's say let's say for every block we are going to uh, find out the generator kill in and out so first the generator b1 block uh, is having two statements 1 and 2 in 1 we have a variable a which is uh, getting some action in 2 we have uh, the b b variable so uh, these are the generator statements because b1 block is generating these two statements okay now similarly the b b2 block is uh, generating statement number 3 b3 block is generating statement number 4 b4 block is generating statement number 5 and b5 block is generating statement number 6 so these are the things that we have already written in the table you can if you can see that in the generator the b1 is 1 2 b2 is 3 b3 is 4 b4 is 5 and b5 is 6 so generator is very easy now about the kill uh, kill is kill is also very simple for example uh, for if you have to find out the kill for the block b1 so here the uh, block b1 is setting up the values of a and b both the variables in uh, subsequent blocks the values of uh, uh, this a and b are getting changed okay for example the value of a is getting changed in b2 in statement number 3 okay the value of uh, a is getting changed in statement number 6 so statement number 3 and 6 are changing the value of a similarly the statement number 2 uh, is it, statement number 2 in b1 block is uh, setting up the value of b which is getting changed in the b3 block wherein the b is set as b equals to b plus 1 and similarly it is getting changed in statement number 5 b equals to b minus 7 so if you can see that the statements which are changing the values of a and b which was actually generated in b1 are statement number 3 4 5 and 6 so these statements are killing the values of killing the initial values which was set by the b1 statement so these values are getting changed here that's why in the kill it is written as 3 4 5 and 6 for the b1 block so for b1 block the kill is 3 4 5 6 okay next see the b2 b2 block in the b2 block uh, the value of a is getting set as 1 and what are the what are the statements which are changing the value of this a those are one statement number statement number one which sets the value of uh, a as 2 and the statement number 5 which sets the value of uh, b as uh, a equals to a plus 2 so 1 and 6 are the kill statements for the statement number uh, for, for the block number b2 now the block b3 sets the value of b as b equals to b plus 1 okay and now the uh, statements which are changing the value of b are statement number 2 and statement number 5 so for b3 the kill is kill value is 2 and 5 for block b4 value of b is set as b minus 7 which is getting changed by statement number 4 and statement number 1 okay so for b4 the uh, for, for the b4 statement number 2 is changing the value of b and statement number 4 is changing the value of b so for b4 the kill value is set as 2 and 4 for b5 which is setting the value of a and the value of a is getting changed in statement number 1 and statement number 3 hence the b5 for b5 the kill value is 1 and 3 now if you see that uh, uh, here there are some inputs of uh, a block which is taken as in in, in the another block okay for b1 block it will be 5 5 means there it's not taking any input but b2 is taking the input from uh, uh, state b1 block also and b5 block also so in the subsequent iterations we can set these values but initially we will consider that the uh, input of any of the base 5 it means there is no input initially in the subsequent step we can change it okay so that's why in the in column we have set as 5 so in of every block is set as 5 means no input now let us see the output so if b1 block has generated the statement 1 and 2 the output of this b1 block is also 1 and 2 okay similarly if b2 has set a value uh, of uh, uh, through the statement number 3 so the output of b2 block is 3 similarly the output of b3 block is 4 output of b4 block is 5 and output of b5 block is 
6. Okay. Now, uh, with the help of the formula that we have seen, we will again be finding out these values of in and out. Okay. We will be finding out the values of in and out. And we will again do one iteration and will set the values of in and out until the values get settled down. If uh, in one of the iteration, the in and out are different from the, sub uh, from the subsequent iteration, then we will again, again perform an iteration. So until the time we get uh, uh, two tables wherein the in and out are stable, we, we will keep on finding this in and out. Okay. So in the next lecture, we will see with the, with the help of an example, uh, how, how to find out the new values of in and out for the same question. Thank you.